Hello everyone and thank you for clicking on the Literacy Volunteers of Harrison County YouTube channel. We are a nonprofit United Way agency. We would love for you to share our videos, to like them, and to subscribe to our channel. Miss Jody is going to give us another story about Winnie the Pooh today. Hello again. We've talked about Winnie the Pooh and all of his friends. And have you ever taken a walk and you've seen an interesting road but the owners didn't want you to go there, so they had trespassers will be, will be caught. Well, that's going to be part of the story, so I want you to know that sometimes that sign stays and sometimes it breaks. So we're starting a story about Winnie the Pooh and Piglet. Now, this isn't really Piglet. This is Olivia, but she's playing the part of Piglet today. So the story is Pooh and Piglet go hunting and nearly catch a woozle. I don't know what a woozle is, but then they didn't either. Remember, there are animals who talk, and so we're just going to have to remember that. Piglet lived in a very grand house in the middle of a beech tree, and the beech tree was in the middle of the forest, and the piglet lived in the middle of the house. Next to his house was a piece of broken board which said, Trespassers W. Now remember we said Trespassers will be, well, the sign broke, so all that's left is Trespassers W. When Christopher Robin asked Piglet what it meant, he said it was his grandfather's name and had been in the family name for a long time. Christopher Robin said, you could be called Trespassers W, and Piglet said, yes, I can. You could because his grandfather was, and it was short for Trespassers Will, which was short for Trespassers William. He was all confused. And his grandfather had two names in case he lost one. Trespassers after an uncle, and William after trespassers. I've got two names, said Christopher Robin carelessly. Well, there you have it. That proves it, said Piglet. One fine winter's day, when Piglet was brushing away the snow in front of his house, he happened to look up, and there was Winnie the Pooh. Now, Winnie the Pooh was walking in circles, thinking of something else when Piglet called to him and he went on walking. Hello, said Piglet. What are you doing? Hunting, said Pooh. Hunting what? Tracking something, said Winnie the Pooh, very mysteriously. Tracking what, said Pooh, coming a little closer. That's just what I asked myself. I don't know what. What do you think you'll answer? I have to have a wait and answer until I catch up with it, said Winnie the Pooh. Now look here, he pointed to the ground in front of him. What do you see? Tracks, said Piglet. Paw marks. He gave a squeak. Oh, Pooh, do you think it's a woozle? It may be, said Pooh. Sometimes it is, and sometimes it isn't. You never can tell with paw marks. With these few words, he went on tracking, and Piglet, after watching him a minute or two, ran after him. Winnie the Pooh had come to a sudden stop and was bending over the tracks in a puzzled way. What's the matter, said Pooh? said Piglet. It's a very funny thing, said Pooh. But there used to be two animals. Now, whatever it was, it's been joined by another whatever it is, and the two of them are now proceeding in company. Would you mind coming with me, Piglet, in case they turn out to be hostile animals? Hostile means really bad and mean. Piglet scratched his ear in a nice sort of way and said that he had nothing to do until Friday and would be delighted to come in case it really was a woozle. You mean in case it really is two woozles, said Winnie the Pooh. And Piglet said that anyhow, he had nothing to do until Friday, so off they went together. There was a small, spiny, large tree there, and it seemed that as if the two woozles, if that's what they were, had been going around this spiny. So round the spiny went Pooh and Piglet after them. Piglet passing the time by telling Pooh about his grandfather Trespassers W and how his grandfather Trespasser W had suffered in his later years from shortness of breath and other matters of interest. And Pooh wondering what a grandfather was. Perhaps it was two grandfathers they had after now. And if so, would he be allowed to take one of them home? Because he didn't know what a grandfather was. He'd like to keep it and he would ask Christopher Robin and then we would find out what a grandfather was. Suddenly, Winnie the Pooh stopped, pointed in front of him, and he said, Look! What? said Piglet with a jump. 
and then to show that he hadn't been frightened, he jumped up and down once or twice in an exercising sort of way. The track said Pooh. A third animal has joined the two. Pooh, cried Wiglet. Do you think it's another woozle? No, said Pooh, because it makes different ma marks. If it's either two woozles and one, as it may be, a whistle, or two it might be. They're very confused. Let us continue to follow them. So on they went, feeling just a little anxious now, in case three animals in front of them were hostile and tender. And Piglet wished very much that his grandfather, T.W., were there instead of elsewhere. And Pooh thought how nice it would be if they met Christopher Robin suddenly, but quite accidentally, and only because he liked Christopher Robin so much. And then all of a sudden, Winnie the Pooh stopped again, licked his lip with this kind of a cooling manner. For he was feeling a little hot and anxious than he was before. There were now four animals in front of them. Do you see, Piglet? Look at their tracks. Three, as it were, three woozles, and now it's a whistle. Another woozle has joined them. And so it seemed to be. There were the tracks, crossing over each other, getting muddled up with each other. But quite plainly, every now and then, the tracks that was four set a pause. I think, said Piglet, Piglet, when he licked the tip of his nose too, found that it was very little comfort. I think that I have just remembered something. I have just remembered something that I have to do yesterday and shan't be able to do tomorrow, but I suppose I really ought to go back and do it now. Well, do it this afternoon, and I'll come with you, said Pooh. Well, it isn't that sort of thing you can do in the afternoon, said Piglet quickly. It's a very particular morning thing that has to be done in the morning, and if possible, between the hours of, what would you say the time is? About 12, said Winnie the Pooh, looking at the sun. Between, as I was saying, the hours of 12 and 12.05. They're really, dear old Pooh, if you'll excuse me. What's that? Pooh looked up in the sky, and then he heard a whistle again. He looked up in the branch of the tree, and then he saw a friend of his. And who do you suppose that friend was? None other but our friend, Christopher Robin. Oh, it's Christopher Robin, said, said Piglet. Oh, you'll be all right, said Piglet. You'll be quite safe with him. Goodbye. And he trotted off home as quick as he could, very glad to be out of all the danger. So he's gone. Christopher Robin came down slowly from the tree. Silly old bear, he said. What were you doing? First you went around the spiny tree twice by yourself. Then Piglet ran after you, and you ran around again. And then you were just going around a fourth time. Wait a minute, said Winnie the Pooh, holding up his paw. He sat down and he thought in the most meaningful way he could. Then he fitted his paw into one of the tracks, and then he scratched his nose, and he stood up. Yes, said Winnie the Pooh. I see now, said Winnie the Pooh. I have been foolish and deluded, he said, and I am a bear of no brains at all. You're the best bear in the world, said Christopher Robin soothingly. Am I, said Pooh, hopefully, and then he brightened up suddenly. Anyhow, said Pooh, it's nearly lunchtime, so he went home for it. He's a silly old bear. He says he's a bear with no way brains, but Christopher Robin seems to think he's the best bear. I hope you like this more. I have some more Winnie the Pooh stories and more Christopher Robin stories, so you kind in and you let us know how you like them. <laughs>